Oh my god, did you saw what happened on SmackDown? LA Knight tweeted some horrible things, and he had no idea what was coming to him. Look, personally, I'm not offended, but there's a certain person who's not gonna let it fly. I'm coming for your soul, and I'm doing it for Yasha. LA Knight got what was coming for him. You do not disrespect Mark. That was definitely one of my favorite SmackDown episodes in a while, because we do have a tournament, we got a return, interesting storyline developments, a pretty eventful episode, and that's what it's all about. It's also funny how Ricochet said exactly what I was saying, but I gotta stop talking about this. I'm a bit of a train guy myself. Chugga, 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 chugga. This video is sponsored by Wrestling GM. Solo Game Dev challenges billion dollar corporation AEW and comes out on top. And this David vs Goliath story was only possible through a passionate and loyal fan base. As a result, Wrestling GM takes the crown for the best wrestling GM simulator on mobile. And you guys know if you want a general manager game with no limitations, Wrestling GM is the way to go. It gives you all the tools you need in general manager. Pick a promotion, manager roster, championships, upgrade your product, build teams, factions, rivalries, check your show's history, sign free agents, and so much more. And of course, you gotta make sure to book the best show possible. As you guys know, I've already played Wrestling GM on my channel. I had a lot of fun. If you wanna check the series out, the link is in the description below. Wrestling GM is available on both iOS and Android devices. Download the game by using the link in the description. Sounds easy, I'm the best booker in the world. Oh yeah? Prove it, Mark. Download the game. Welcome back to the channel, my train enthusiasts. How are you guys doing today? Let's talk about Smack It Down. The show kicks off with the Brawling Brutes. At Survivor Series War Games, we are going to see the Brawling Brutes and Drew McIntyre and a mystery partner against the Bloodline, which is honestly, when it comes to factions, is literally the biggest war games match you could have, right? Part of me still wants SmackDown vs Raw though. Sheamus says a lot of people are not happy to see Drew McIntyre stand by my side. We went to war many times over the last 20 years. And that's how they gained mutual respect. Backed. People started chanting Usi, Seamus turned into Broody. People started chanting Broody, but more likely Booty. So he asked Drew McIntyre, will you be our honorary Broody? And Drew McIntyre obviously accepts. They were about to reveal the fifth member, but we see Sami Zayn and he says he doesn't care. They are going to win anyway. He doesn't even want to find out who the fifth man is is because he's confident he says you know what you can say lately we've been feeling very oozy okay first of all the crowd sucked the, the 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 crowd sucked goblin's dick like that was really 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 bad again man it sucks last i, I think it was raw raw's crowd was really really good but this one maybe it's just me but i feel like nothing really got a big reaction. And I'm pretty sure you're going to agree with this. Once they said that the mystery partner is someone that Sami Zayn will not want to see, it was pretty obvious that they're talking about Kevin Owens, right? Because the story didn't end. And now we're going to see Sami Zayn, you know, finding it hard to choose between Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns. I'm wondering what's gonna happen at Survivor Series. Maybe they're gonna turn on Sami, maybe Sami is going to turn on the bloodline, we'll see. Obviously the Usos are not happy that Sami Zayn didn't find out who the partner is. I mean, he stopped it from being revealed. They argued but got on the same page because Roman is gonna be here tonight. Even though we knew it's going to be Kevin Owens, right? Part of me still wanted it to be Wade Barrett because we all know Wade Barrett, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus are like, you know, friends in real life. So I was like, May maybe there's a chance maybe but yeah unfortunately we didn't get that then we saw one of the best matches of 2022 in my opinion ricochet versus mustafa ali in a world cup so it was pakistan versus america winner faces braun Strowman. before the match we see digital wwe exclusive where ricochet said you don't have to do this but mustafa ali still wants to wrestle so we got the match there's actually quite long, you know, longer than expected, and uh, he sold the injury, obviously, which is a nice touch, but even with that, the match itself was really, 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 really fun to watch. To me, since we got, you know, Ricochet responding to Braun Strowman's comments, it, this match itself kind of felt like, you know what, <laughs> Omas versus Strowman, <laughs> maybe that was good. Let us show you how great this could be 
as well. So again, a very, very fun match. And the finish was pretty, pretty weird. We saw Ricochet with a shooting star press on a standing Mustafa Ali, which looked absolutely unbelievable. Ricochet takes the W right here. Uh, and, you know, we got the mutual respect. I don't know about you guys. That was definitely one of my favorite matches of 2022. Really fun, but also told a decent story. The man is injured and he still wants to fight. Lately, that's, you know, Mustafa Ali's gimmick, basically. You know, trying to overcome these obstacles. He doesn't. He never does. It's kind of a shame, but he's trying. We really talked about losing their longest reigning tag team champion style to the Usos. We see the Imperium, and they basically said that the New Day are embarrassing this ring. The New Day made fun of Gunter's look. They made an Adams Family reference, but Gunter is a Chad. He's like, you proved my point. We accept your challenge. Emma says, you're so much better than Karrion Cross anyway. This time, you got it. I know that look, man. I know that look. I'd say look of a man who wants to smash. You, you can tell. And you can tell he didn't before. It's going to be his first time, maybe. But he lost. Yes, people, we got the match. And uh, yes, he wasn't buried or anything like that. But he still lost the match. So that look, that look, Madcap, ain't happening. I don't know what WWE are going to do with Karrion Cross right now. I'm not seeing any interesting rivalries at the moment for the guy. It seems like he should be one of the main eventers. But he doesn't fit into any plans at all. During the show, we did see the Usos asking him whether he is a part of, you know, the Wargame stack team. He said, no, I don't care about that stuff. When I'm taking these championships, and I will, I'm going to do it by myself. You will not take these championships. That literally makes no sense whatsoever. Triple H does, does that. Wow, that's a dumb decision. Unfortunately, Karrion Cross still doesn't get that kind of reaction we want the guy to get. Is Madcap Moss the right rivalry? I don't know. Then we saw Bray Wyatt, who was actually here to apologize to LA Knight because last week he attacked him, even though he did have his reasons, obviously. So Bray Wyatt wants to apologize. LA Knight says, I think you respect me. You respect me because I was not afraid of you. LA Knight says, I just wanna... And he slaps Bray Wyatt in the face. Phase. Bray Wyatt is furious. Well, Knight says, now we're even. Now we're even. Bray Wyatt is angry. He's losing his mind, but he's trying to control himself. He says, there's a lot of things I want to do to you, but I'm fighting my urges. He offers his hand. LA Knight is hesitating. But then the dumb idiot slaps Bray Wyatt again. And that's when shit got real no more games and we already got some teases Bray Wyatt did say what you're going to do right now when he offered the handshake is going to be the biggest decision of your life and he decided to slap him in the face again he was afraid though we saw him leaving the arena and oh my god is that uncle howdy Ellie Knight I just wanna say I ain't here to hurt you I'm here to tickle you are you ticklish or not are you a cousin or not? No matter to me. No matter to me. But I don't think that was Uncle Howdy. Then later on the show, we saw the payoff. He paid for what he did. I'm not even sure if that's a long-term storyline or it's over right now. He got his lesson and that's it. I'm not sure, but that was by far the most interesting thing Bray Wyatt did in the WWE ever since he came back. That was different. Finally, we're seeing the progress, you know, we're seeing the bigger progress. He's trying to be a good guy, but he's being put in these situations where he just has to react. Then we saw Shotzi versus Shina Baszler. I thought Shina Baszler is going to win. Uh, we did see Ronda interfering quite a lot, but then we heard... Ta -da -ta -da 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 -da. And Shotzi came out on top, so I believe there is a chance we might get the women's championship match. Shotzi versus Ronda Rousey. Doesn't sound that bad. We see the Imperium, the New Day, and the mystery partner is Bruh. You get the idea, we got the brawl, we got the match, and the match itself was alright, it was fun. Uh, what a horrible decision though. The New Day and Braun Strowman won against the Imperium. I, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Braun Strowman is far, far, far less interesting to me than the Imperium. The New Day didn't need this W. Ricochet tells Braun Strowman, you shouldn't underestimate these, in your own words, flippy flippers. That's disgusting. I can tell he doesn't like trains. Yeah, I didn't expect WWE using that in his storyline. That's actually pretty funny. Relax, Ricochet. 
the train man has that choo-choo power. He's going to eat you alive in that ring, man. Yeah, that yeah, Strowman is winning, definitely. And in the main event, we saw another tournament match. Sami Zayn versus Butch. So another interesting match. We saw a bunch of people, you know, at ringside. It was almost like a lumberjack match right here. Butch takes the W against Sami Zayn. Immediately gets attacked by Solo Sikoa. We see the spinning solo. Then we see everyone fighting in the ring. And we see see Roman's arrival to SmackDown Superman Punch. So distracts Drew McIntyre and we saw a spear. Then we saw Sheamus versus Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns came out on top with the help of Sami Zayn, the honorary loyal Oos. Roman was looking for his spear but we see Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens takes down Roman Reigns and then we see a face off between Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Obviously a lot of weird feelings right here. Sami Zayn doesn't know what to do. Kevin Owens is his best friend, but he's loyal to the bloodline. How can he choose, especially when we got Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns? So Kevin Owens hits Roman Reigns with a stunner and Sami Zayn just doesn't know what to do. That was your SmackDown, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting developments. I think we are going to get something really important at War Games. Maybe not. That's always the case with the WWE. It seems like, you know, something big is about to happen, but they just drag and drag and drag. And sometimes even, you know, eventually it happens when nobody even gives a shit. So that's another possibility. Anyway, a very eventful SmackDown. Can't wait for the pay-per-view, man. This year's Survivor Series definitely looks interesting. Thank you for watching The Great One. Peace, love and hugs. It's been a pleasure.